Okay, this pattern is from Steve Good. Uh, it's a, what he calls a slat basket. Um, I make all kinds of patterns from him. He, most of them are fairly simple, but he makes some really interesting stuff. Uh, it's Scroll Saw Workshop. Uh, his website is scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. And if you get on there, you can sign up for an email. He sends out every day and he sends a pattern out every day and they're all free. So, um, you know, it, it, mo like I said, most of them are fairly simple and easy compared to other ones that are out there, but uh, they're really nice. I use a lot of his patterns. Okay. And the other thing on this, I've made enough of them to know, the thickness of your stock determines the height of the basket because you're going to make it eight uh, slats high. So if this is a half an inch thick, all eight of them together will be four inches. If it's an inch thick, it'll wind up eight inches tall. Um, this particular one, I think most of these are about 11 sixteenths, give or take. So anyway, um, I print it out and uh, get my stock prepared. All I do is just make it smooth. Um, when you scroll sawing, <coughs> scroll sawing um, I don't put the pattern directly on the wood. Um, sometimes I use blue painter's tape to, if I'm using a small project, you know, I'll wrap it in this small, uh, painter's tape. But for these larger projects, what you, what I use, um, is contact paper. It's the same stuff you put in your drawers or in your, uh, um, kitchen cabinets, whatever. Um, you just cut, cut a piece and you lay it on, uh, you know, stick it to the wood and make sure, you know, I kind of burnish it in a little bit. And then I take uh, contact adhesive. I just happen to have some of this uh, 3M. I don't think they sell this particular brand any or uh, type anymore. I think now it's 45 or anyway, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I don't think it matters. Anyway, I put just a light coat on both sides, lay the pattern down and just rub it on and it sticks. With it. So once you get that, uh, you need to drill the holes at the at the angle of this and then you need to set your scroll saw at that same angle <coughs> so once you do that you're ready to start scroll sawing and all these interior ones are cut at that angle but the outside one you got to make sure you stop and set your saw back to 90 degrees to cut the last one because that's going to be the uh, outside edge here in this particular pattern also, he has a separate page to cut the handles. Hmm. And I didn't do that. What I did is I just saved this piece of wood, the leftover, and I set my compass to, I don't know, whatever thickness, uh, width I think will look good. I think that's three quarters of an inch. And I just run around it, and then I cut that out on the scroll saw. So hmm. and I just cut a gap in it to make the handle. That way all the uh, grain will match and everything, and it, I think it looks better. So you're getting the whole thing, including the handle, out of that one everything piece. Everything out of here is one piece. So, you know, just, just contrast colors, just whatever you want to do. Um, these I just cut on the table saw. Um, these happen to be, I believe, a half an inch wide and an eighth inch thick. So however you want to do it. Are you planing them down to an eighth and then... I did it the other way. Um, I had a half inch piece uh -huh. and then, and then I the used strips. my thin uh, strip jig and I just ripped off a whole bunch of eighth inch pieces. Right here's my little setup block. So that's an eighth of an inch right there. I just lock my fence down. Then all you do, this right here is what's left over from the piece. All you do is put this in here like this. And obviously you don't hold it with your finger, but I got a little stick and then you run it through. You just run it right through and that'll be a half inch by an eighth inch thick piece. And then you just keep moving this in. So I set this up like this and you just come down. Make sure that's right in there like that. And then you just set it up and just drill right through. And you drew all these, like I said, at an angle, except this outside one right here. And that one's perpendicular to 90 degrees. 
So once you do that, you get all these drilled. I think there's seven, seven holes. Uh, you're ready to start scrolling. So um, I cut mine from the inside out. So all these have to be cut first. So I tip my blade. So once we get drilled out, we need to cut. This particular blade is a Pegasus number five modified geometry. That's what I'm using here. Um, I really like the Pegasus blades. Uh, Scroll saw blades are kind of like politics and religion. People argue them forever. Some people like these. Flying Dutchman, Olsen, there's a whole different, several different manufacturers and everybody has their favorite. So, but I like these because um, on this particular pattern, if you look at the bottom few teeth here, they're going up. So that cuts on the upstroke. So, all the rest of them cut on the downstroke, which is the normal way to do it. But by doing that, you don't leave what they call fuzzies all over the bottom, if, you know, when they cut. Yeah. I have a foot switch on mine. I think they call it dead man. But anyway, it, my uh, on off switch basically is my foot. So that's how I control it. So on this one, I got to cut this way around. And one thing you got to remember is when you're cutting at an angle like this, you can't cut a 90 degree corner because if you try to cut a perfect 90 up here, the blade's got to back up underneath and you'll snap the blade. So even though he put these square corners on here, you got to round them off. Otherwise you're going to snap your blades. So that's the base, that's the first one. So that's all done. Then here's the base on this one. Basically I flip them upside down like that. Then the next one I cut out is right here. And I just take it, flip it upside down, stick it right back inside. And they all line right up. So, you know, there's the next one. Cut that and then you just keep cutting them till you cut the last one perpendicular. And when you're all done, right there's all your sides. I save the outside one and I make sure I leave enough that's probably gonna make it that thick right there because that's the thinnest spot and that looks about right. And I'll draw a line around here and I'm gonna cut that perpendicular to have my handle. The handles will be cut out of this over here. That way, when I put the handles on the basket, the grain will line up. So you have basically one piece of wood. So once I get them all cut, this is what you wind up with. And you just peel the pattern off. And this is where that contact paper is really slick. It just peels right off like that. So that's the base. Now these you got to be a little careful. You don't need to be because uh, they're thin. So 
that's the general basket. Now what I do is I cut these to length earlier. All I did is put the basket like this and I measure from to get the short ones. I measure from that base right there to the top right here. And I try to make them just a whisker shorter so that they don't um, stick up above the uh, last round piece here because if they do you got to cut them off and sand it in it and for the long ones you measure from the actual base all the way at the bottom to the top right here so we like that so anyway once you get this like this you take off the top piece let's see I gotta remember the short pieces go where you have a bump in like this so I'll set one here and you see it goes just like that so it's every other one okay that's all the short ones and you glue those I glue those in first but to make sure the basket is aligned I put the long ones in just to keep it so everything's where it should be before I start gluing. Because if you don't put these in, the long ones in, it might shift on the base and you don't want that to happen. Because these, the long ones, go down past right to the base, right to the bottom so that it lines everything up. But anyway, now this is ready to pretty much glue up the short um, staves here. I think that's what they're called. So I use um, this little bottle right here. Basically anything that'll put out just a squirt of glue a little bit. Um, I try not to get too much in it. And then I use these little clamps right here to clamp. Once I get both sides glued, I make sure this is pressed down Mm. And then I just clamp it like that, and then that'll hold everything together. So that'll glue the bottom to the top right here, and then when I glue these in, it'll glue from the bottom again to the top right here. That'll keep it weighted down so it won't lift off. <laughs> okay, so once that's done, uh, once that's dried, um, the next step is to add, put the top on, and then glue all the longer ones to the top and the bottom using the same same process. Mm -hmm. Then you'll wind up with this. These are all glued up, everything except the uh, handle. All right, I've already cut these out. Um, and you'll see that they go on like this. And if you've noticed, the grain matches. If I actually see that, you can see the grain all matches. What I did before I uh, am going to put these on is I did a really light sanding across the top. And I eased this edge on the handle on the inside, outside, top, bottom. That's all. I use an eighth inch uh, roundover bit on my trim rider to do it really quick you could sand it i mean you can do any way you do it it doesn't really matter 
but I ease the edge so that it, you know, when you, if you do grab a hold of it, you know, you don't have a sharp edge there. And I think it kind of hides any, you know, any kind of imperfections in there too, if you're careful. So now what you need to do is set these on here like this and drill a hole. I use quarter inch dowels. I happen to use some I made, but you can buy them, whatever. <clears throat> so what I do is I take a piece of paper. I think this is folded over twice, so it's four thicknesses. And if you're not gonna finish these, if you're gonna leave them raw, you probably don't have to do this, but believe it or not, <laughs> if you finish this with it clamped tight to there, it will not close again. So you need a little bit of thickness in here. When it's ready to finish, the way I finished the other ones, and it looked pretty good, was uh, I used the shellac method under water-based poly. I use a, I don't know, it's probably about a one pound cut. I don't even know, to be honest with you. I use um, the sanding sealer shellac with a little bit of amber shellac added to it. So it gives it just a little bit of tint and it makes this maple and even the walnut and the poplar just gives it a little bit of tint to it. So it's, it, I think it looks good and everybody seemed to like it. So I'll put probably two coats of that on there. Um, and it dries pretty quick here in this weather, you know, it'll dry in a day, but I let it dry for at least, uh, probably two days to make sure it's good and dry and cured. Um, if you need to sand it at all, that's when I sand it, but you really can't. I mean, you really isn't much sanding you can do. I just do a little bit of the top, maybe the handles. Then I uh, do water-based poly. Um, I'll spray on some, I think I used semi-gloss or satin, I don't remember which, but uh, I'd have to look. But then I put two to three coats of that on there. And that's how I finish them. And they came out looking pretty good. 